Hi, everybody. Act TV. That's what you're watching. I'm Juliana Forlano. It's coming up. Gabby Goldstein, the co-founder of Sister District, is joining us to talk about independent state legislature doctrine. What is that? Well, it's the conservative legal theory that argues that the Constitution gives state legislatures the sole authority to set all our election rules. You can see how this might be problematic. Last week, the Supreme Court allowed court-ordered congressional maps to stand in North Carolina and Pennsylvania, which is a short-term, short-term legal win for progressives. Meanwhile, that IS... LD, the Independent State Legislature, uh, Legislature's Doctrine, is uh, circling our democracy like a great white shark. Anyway, joining us to talk about the major threat posed by this doctrine is Gabby Goldstein coming up in just a minute. <laughs> Gabby, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Um, so first, let's just jump right in. Can you talk about the Independent State Legislature's Doctrine? What is it? Who is behind it? And why was it gaining so much traction last year? Yeah, so I think that when folks uh, hear legal theories and jargon, it can be a little overwhelming and it can be uh, hard to hard to sort of follow it. This, this theory is actually really, really, really simple. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to worry about the, the fancy names and all the rest. This is a theory that conservative lawyers have hatched up that basically says that the Constitution, the federal Constitution, gives state legislatures the authority to do whatever they want when it comes to elections without judicial review, period, full stop. Uh, why would they want this? Well, because Republicans control so many state legislatures. Uh, this has been a long-term conservative project to build power in state legislatures. As I always say, progressives mm -hmm. are tardy to the party when it comes to paying attention to, the, to the party. Tardy to the party to it, when, it, when, when it comes to paying attention to state legislatures, very overlooked venue of power for us, not mm -hmm. overlooked at all on the right. So they have all this power in state legislatures and they're looking for ways to use that power. And one way to use that power is by establishing as the law of the land that these legislatures can do whatever they want around elections. Mm. Um, of course, the end game there being the 2024 election, which is really much closer than we uh, might think, where, uh, where the sorts of fraud it and uh, election review and election subversion that we saw coming out of places like Arizona, Wisconsin, et cetera, where Republicans control the legislatures, um, essentially carte blanche. Well, if they can say, you know, if the, if the Supreme Court says that the state legislatures can decide election rules, then, then what it means is that they can decide election outcomes. Mm. And there you go for the 24 election. Yeah, and we're sunk because we already saw what the right wing is planning. But they're like, oh, we don't care who voted. First, let's cl close down the polling places. Let's make it illegal to give somebody a piece of pizza or a glass of water. Let's make it a 10-hour a wait um, and any other number of things that they were doing in these states that are trying to suppress the vote. Let's throw people off the voter rolls. And now, even if the by some miracle, even with all of that, if the progressive candidate should win, we can just decide it wasn't fair and throw it out, right? That's what's going on here. Yes, that's exactly right. And uh, it's a grave threat to to our democracy, as I think, you know, your viewers can clearly see. Uh, the whole premise of, of our democracy is that our votes matter and um, and that our elections are fair and, and open. And so if we have uh, institutions like state legislatures that have been totally overtaken by Republicans, unfairly, mind you, through gerrymandering, mm -hmm. uh, and we can talk about that as well, um, these, these are unearned majorities that Republicans have in state legislatures. And by the way, their policies that they're pushing are very unpopular. Mm -hmm. Republicans are very, you know, they're, they're uh, desperately afraid of the 
uh, of the future of this country. And um, they're looking for ways to enshrine their power in perpetuity. Uh, and a different way to think yeah. is they're looking for ways to rig the rules so that they can stay in power even when uh, you know their, pop their policies are no longer popular. Talk about what happened in the Supreme Court last week with the congressional maps. Just bring everyone up to speed and then why is this important? Yeah, so um, in both Pennsylvania and North Carolina, the Supreme Courts decided that uh, the congressional maps uh, uh, needed, to, needed to be redrawn to be fair uh, it, as a way to um, unwind the gerrymandering, the Republican gerrymandering that has been such a key feature of the congressional maps in those states. So the Supreme Courts in those states, those state Supreme Courts said, no, 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 we're, you need to redraw those maps so that they're fairer. So the maps were redrawn and the maps were fairer. The Republican Party in each of those states then turned around and filed emergency order applications to the Supreme Court, asking the Supreme Court to stop these fair maps from going into effect. They wanted the old, the, the prior unfair gerrymandered maps to go into effect. And part of what they argued to the court was this theory that the state legislatures had passed these maps and the state Supreme Court has no right to order fairer maps. The state legislature gets to decide what the mm -hmm. maps are, regardless of whether they're fair or not. Mm -hmm. And that is the crux of this legal theory uh, that, you know, the name says it all, independent state legislatures. It's the idea that they are independent and they are above, essentially above judicial review. Um, and I think what it's imp important to understand is that the Supreme Court declined to throw these maps out now under this emergency order, uh, as, as a matter of emergency order, but they could very well hear this case in the next term. And they want it. Many of the, the conservative justices on this court want to hear this case in the full term. Mm -hmm. And they there is reason to believe that they will establish some measure of this radical expansion of state legislative power as, as, as the law of the land, um, certainly before the 24 election. This does not make me happy. <laughs> what uh, can we do about this? I know Sister District is fighting this. What what can we do? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing we can all do is not uh, close our eyes to the importance of states and the growing importance of states. And I think part of what has gotten us to this point as progressives is um, not just that we don't we have well, it is certainly true that historically we have not invested in states and state legislatures pretty much at all. Uh, the you know the the budget in 2020 with the biggest election of our lifetime uh, for the the Democratic Legislative Campaign Committee, which is the the part of the Democratic Party that helps to elect folks to state legislatures was about $50 million. That's a quarter of the total price tag for many losing uh, Senate races in 2020, right? You get 75 million, 100 million for these losing races. So we, we don't invest enough money, we don't invest enough time, energy, attention into these races over the past hundred years. Where are we and gonna so, get this money? I mean, it seems like all the money is going to the right. <laughs> no, we, I'm talking, you know, these losing races against, you know, the Mitch McConnell's of the world, and, you yeah. know, and these, these races that Democrats pour money into. It's a waste of money to pour our money into races that we are going to lose by 25 points, millions and millions and millions of dollars. If we redirected those funds towards strategic winnable races, um, it might not make us feel as good, right? It's good to rage donate. It feels good. Take my $20. Yeah. I hate Mitch McConnell. Um, that's, you know, it's not- <laughs> Rage it's, donate. I love that. That's, that's a, that, Yeah. I mean, there was an article in the Atlantic about rage donating and the fact that progressives do it. Um, it's not very strategic, right? So, but in any case, what, what I mean to say is that we, we're in this position because of a long-term disinvestment on our side in mm -hmm. state power, but it's not, it goes deeper than that, I think. I think that progressives have an aversion to the idea of state power mm -hmm. because it is so associated with 
conservative values, states' rights, uh, and, and all of that. When in fact, I think we can expand our imagination and look to the, the progressive states that we do control, the legislatures, California, Massachusetts, et cetera, and see incredibly progressive visionary policy coming out of those states and develop more of a progressive federalism. This idea that states can be vehicles for good for all of us uh, in terms of policy and all the rest. So um, we, what we can all do is, is get educated about the importance of state legislatures, get excited about them, think of them as not just things we have to tend to because we wanna fight Republicans, we, we do need to do that, but also because they're important on their own and they can be important bastions of progressive policy. Um, so that's one thing. And then of course, invest our time, our energy and resources into these races and into building state power uh, sustainably and for the long term. It's, it's absolutely necessary for our democracy. Gabby Goldstein, co-founder of Sister District, thank you so much for coming on the program, and we're going to continue to follow uh, this issue as we hopefully patch up the, the, the rough spots that we've let crumble uh, while we weren't paying attention in our democracy. It's thank rough. you. <laughs> um, you can find Sister District uh, on the internets, and Gabby is Gabby, under, as you see right here, Gabby underscore, underscore Goldstein on the Twitters. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we're going to talk about defunding Fox News.